Welcome. Uh, my name is Glenn Deason, and I'm joined today by the excellent Alexander McCurse from the Duran and Professor Sergei Karaganov, who is uh, an honorary chairman of the Council on Foreign and Defense Policy and also a former advisor of President Yeltsin and President uh, Putin. So uh, welcome. It's a, yeah, it's a great privilege. It's a, it's a pleasure to see you again. Likewise. So uh, our topic today is an interesting article written by yeah, Professor Karaganov uh, with the title Age of War, in which well, you outline how the world is changing and the conflicts or yeah, wars that uh, awaits us. Now, I wanted to start off with uh, an argument, an article that you previously made, which has been considered controversial because you argued in favor of uh, lowering the thresholds for Russia's use of nuclear weapons. So uh, I remember when we were in Sochi in October, uh, Putin addressed you directly concerning this argument. And well, he didn't support changing Russia's nuclear posture. However, I found uh, your argument to be very interesting because the premise is uh, based on a real problem, which appears to be that nuclear deterrence no longer seems to function to the same extent it did in the past. I mean, during the Cold War, uh, it would have been unthinkable that uh, either side would have used uh, their own weapons to strike deep inside the territory of, well, Russia or then the or United States, even through a proxy. Yet, you know, now we see uh, people like Anthony Blinken arguing it's not up to the U.S. to tell Kiev who they, wh where they should strike with U.S. weapons. So, and also, I guess many were shook by seeing the use of American cluster ammunition being used against civilian targets in Belgorod. So uh, it just seems like one red line is breached after another. And uh, to paraphrase what well, Joe Biden, he said, uh, or to quote, he said that sending F-16s could would start World War III. And yes, now he supports sending them. So it's uh, so the red lines doesn't seem to be don't seem to be respected anymore. So I certainly agree with the argument that nuclear deterrence has been weakened, which is extremely dangerous. But you know, what is the solution? Uh, does it solve it to reduce the threshold of using them? So anyways, that's why I thought, uh, yeah, Professor Karagnov, if, if you can unpack this argument about altering Russia's nuclear posture. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's not only about Russia's nuclear posture. Uh, the problem is much deeper than uh, the break of uh, the crossing of the red lines and of doing something un unthinkable in uh, the previous nuclear age, and that is, I mean, waging a war against a major nuclear power. Mm, I would have been asked, I mean, four years ago about that. He said that is impossible, he would have said. Mm, unfortunately, he's dead, and he hasn't been listened to for quite, quite a few years. Um, uh, but uh, the situation is um, uh, uh, much more uh, complex and dangerous than simply uh, NATO uh, waging a proxy war, but actually a real war against Russia, which uh, is uh, outright dangerous and could lead only to three outcomes. One is uh, that uh, Ukraine would be a run, which is mostly most probable, but will bring sacrifices from Russians and especially from Ukrainians. Um, uh, the second is that, uh, and collapses. The second is that a kind of a peace agreement would be reached, um, uh, whereas uh, South and East of Ukraine uh, will, will um, rejoin Russia, while uh, a kind of a uh, friendly regime, um, those in the West would call a regime, totally demilitarized and friendly to Russia will be in the rest of Ukraine. The third, if that is not reachable, uh, then uh, it could lead to a direct conf confrontation. So the uh, challenge in this particular for the, uh, for the West is uh, whether to agree uh, to a defeat, to get away with, uh, uh, with flying banners, agreeing uh, that it has lost but with dignity, or face uh, a catast catastrophe. Uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, but uh, uh, this is a difficult, uh, Russia is winning this war and will be winning this war, whatever happens. The problem is the cost uh, for the world and for the, uh, for Ukrainians and for Europe. If it comes to, uh, 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 who God forbids, uh, for necessity to strike uh, several European countries. Uh, which uh, yeah. we have a first 
uh, strike doctrine in principle, uh, whereas, as, as well as the United States. And as I argue, I mean, it is a viable option, though I beg uh, uh, the Almighty that uh, we wouldn't be uh, necessitated to do that. Uh, but the problem is even deeper. Uh, the use of the tectonic sheets in the world system, the whole system is shifting. The, the whole, uh, the whole uh, is, is changing. Uh, many conflicts will uh, emerge, and uh, they could eventually, uh, eventually uh, lead to a, uh, a world war. Uh, either by default, by just linking together, or by a desperate uh, attempt by one of the powers to uh, start a, a really big. Uh, the question is how to arrange for a dignified rollback of the West, which is inevitable. But uh, the problem is that the rollback uh, of the West, rolling back to a dignified, hopefully, place in the world system, the West could take. Uh, the world uh, uh, with it uh, into an abyss, even. Uh, but then, uh, even just putting away the West problem, we will have new imperialist uh, competition of rising powers. The world is free. Uh, Russia, by uh, undermining the foundation of the Western dominance, uh, which it had had for five hundred, uh, have been heading for um, having uh, for five hundred years, and there was military superiority has um, uh, uh, undermined uh, the system and it freed the world. And so Indonesia in 10 hours will be, in 10 years or 15 years, will be a great power. Iran will be a great power. I mean, uh, and, and they will compete. And, it will, and uh, pre so we will have a rerun of the, uh, of the Australian system uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, uh, and um, uh, without uh, without a safety uh, precaution, I was, uh, uh, without uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, which was a term, we will have an, uh, uh, what I call an age of wars. So it is not only a question of immediate Russian or uh, Western uh, on the territory of Ukraine. Mm. Uh, it is about the fate of the world. Mm. Uh, so it is not, and it is not only Russia uh, uh, um, uh, changing its nuclear policy, which it will change, of course, and it is, I assume it is changing, of course, uh, but not publicly as of yet. Uh, but about uh, whether we could uh, arrive at some kind of an understanding mm. uh, of um, what will be the safety net for the future world. I, I get to make a quick few observations. I, I, of course, lived through the Cold War from the Western side. I mean, I was, you know, in the West. I can remember how in the 1960s and 1970s, I remember that time very well, the big overriding fear that was shared by Western publics, by Western political leaders, especially after the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis was that we could find ourselves in a nuclear war. And it had very important effects on behavior. Firstly, it led to a very elaborate system of arms control uh, being created between the Soviet Union and the United States. There was the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which tried to halt the spread of nuclear weapons. There, were, um, there was also effects, constraints, on the behavior of the two superpowers against each other. So I can remember, I can actually remember, you know, reading in the newspapers, hearing on the BBC, how there were concerns, for example, when the United States during the Vietnam War was bombing the Vietnamese port of Haiphong, that that might lead to attacks on Soviet merchant ships, and that this is considered to be incredibly dangerous. I can remember during the 1982 crisis in Syria and Lebanon, uh, there were also concerns that if the United States launched airstrikes on Syria, that might result in Soviet technicians who were present in Syria being killed. And I can remember the British Defence Secretary, or former Defence Secretary, uh, Dennis Healy, going on British television, saying this was unacceptably dangerous. And of course, there were huge protests whenever there was any danger of nuclear weapons or of nuclear war taking place. I can remember millions of people participating in Britain over those protests. 
uh, in those processes. All that fear has gone completely. It is not discussed anymore amongst people in uh, the West. Um, on the contrary, if you go to Western newspapers, what you constantly read, incessantly read, is that uh, we must call Mr. Putin's bluff any danger coming from increasingly aggressive actions towards Russia, missile strikes on Russian positions deep inside Russia, whatever. Well, that danger does not exist because the Russians are only bluffing and we should go ahead and do all of these things. And the pressure to do that is huge. And the counter pressure is all but non-existent. Now, I find that extremely worrying, perhaps because, as I said, I am a child of the Cold War and of the previous nuclear confrontations. And I am not sure myself that the way to deal with this is by adjusting the nuclear thresholds. But to say that there is a problem and that there is a real danger, I would completely agree with. And coming to a specific point, which you have made, Professor Karaganov, I have been following very, very closely the sort of things that people have been saying in the United States and in Britain about negotiations with the Russians to try to find a graceful end to the war in Ukraine. My clear view is that no negotiations like that are going to happen, that there was a policy debate in Washington about it, and that those who wanted to stop negotiations have, in effect, won. So that, that is my concern. I think we are drifting into exactly the situation where, which you said, a defeat for the West in Ukraine, no negotiations at all, and at the same time, a very alarming situation where people no longer fear or even talk about the danger of nuclear war. Well, uh, uh, you're quite right. Uh, I call it strategic parasitism, or parasitism, whatever it sounds. Um, uh, it is, um, uh, the problem is uh, that uh, over the last 70 years, because uh, nuclear weapons provided us with a relative peace, or us, us in the East and the West, the people get used to it. They thought about what war is. And we have a generation, especially in the West, of people who do not understand what is war. Uh, so uh, it's not only uh, that they are afraid of nuclear weapons, they are not afraid of war anymore. Uh, they, this is, uh, uh, I would say it's not, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 it is a lack of uh, strategic understanding, to put it politely. Well, they are living in a very strange world. And the reasons why I opened up this debate was to sober up uh, the populations of uh, and uh, elites of the Western countries, but also in my own country, because uh, many people forgot about what war was. So, however, of course, uh, the uh, fear and uh, remembrance of war is much more here as well as in Asia. Uh, so uh, uh, the question is just to uh, uh, to restore self, uh, the feeling of self-preservation. And that's why it's not only lowering thresholds, it's just r reminding people uh, that they, could, uh, they are going into an abyss. And uh, the world is now, as I understand, is uh, uh, much more dangerous at any, at any time. Uh, and it will be more and more dangerous um, if we not change the course than any time since '45, but the Cuban Missile Crisis, which was even in '46, '47. I am a historian of war and a historian of strategy. There was no real possibility of a war, and even then there was no real possibility of a nuclear war. Uh, and uh, then the first uh, uh, strike. Uh, uh, strategy of the United uh, States and NATO was a fake. Uh, I know that for sure because uh, when the end, when Americans understood that Russia, the Soviets, uh, got a, a, a reliable possibility of delivering a couple of workers on their territory, they just stopped even there thinking about it. They were planning, they were bluffing, but there was not an issue. But now they forgot about it. 
And what is really dangerous in this world is that uh, Secretary Blinken and then his president uh, went on record uh, saying that the climate change is equal or even more dangerous than a nuclear war. I mean, that, that, is, that means that these people are mad. And they, and I call on, quote unquote, I mean, deep state or oligarchy in, in the West, whoever they are, uh, to change these people and to sober up uh, the elites and the European elites, as unfortunately. I know I, I was a part of them, and I knew and knew them well. Have lost their strategic class. Well, I mean, there are no strategic thinkers in Europe except for two or three. Um, in the United States, it probably they remain, but we see what the heads of uh, the American states are telling us. Uh, so you know, the question is uh, how uh, to raise, reinstall the nuclear fuse uh, before it is too late. And it is not about, uh, that's why I'm, uh, in my future work, I will say that Russia has uh, an oblig not only a necessity, but even an obligation to lower the nuclear threshold to save the world uh, from uh, people who get caught insane. Mm -hmm. And I will soon argue for a necessity, for example, uh, to start trial tests of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, even up to repeating, I mean, something like uh, the King of Bombs, which uh, I mean, was blown uh, uh, in the north. I mean, so just to uh, remind people what hell is. Mm. But I hope that we will stop before that. And mm. this is one of the steps on the ladder of escalation, uh, which I have been arguing for. Yeah, but uh, we we'll hope that people will uh, get sober. There are signs, though. Uh, that, uh, at least in the United States, people are getting uh, a bit more sober. Now, they are, if um, uh, until uh, early summer this year, they have been saying that Russian will never use. Uh, uh, Europeans continue to do that because they have lost any sense of uh, self-preservation. Uh, since, uh, since summer, uh, you, Americans stopped saying, they were saying that there is a possibility of using how to avoid that. Lately, mm -hmm. they have been uh, telling uh, that uh, United States, in very serious uh, ways that the United States would lose a war if it starts. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and even uh, started to plan uh, how to uh, persuade Russian military uh, not to obey to the orders of political uh, leaders if the orders are to use nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, the sobering up will continue, but I'm not sure uh, whether uh, it will not be too late. But mm -hmm. again, it is not only the United States and Europe, which is, I mean, uh, the whole world is becoming different, and there will be a new, uh, what I call new imperial rival. Mm -hmm. uh, before new balance will be settled. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I do not see any other way uh, but to reinstall the nuclear fuels. Uh, and I think it's not only in order to win the war um, against the West and Ukraine, it will be won, uh, whatever mm. the cost. Hopefully, uh, uh, our uh, West. What do you say to the. Partners, to understand they, are, they will either they will be destroyed or they will, they, they will have a rerun of their Afghan scenario or they will uh, uh, retreat with flying banners uh, in a dignified manner. Mm -hmm. But already half a million Ukrainians have been killed. Mm -hmm. And I think over a million uh, were, uh, uh, or more, uh, died indirectly. Mm -hmm. uh, tens and tens of thousands of Russian troops were killed. And it will continue. So I would, I would love mm -hmm. to stop that before. Yeah. And the West has lost this war. Mm -hmm. And it should retreat, and I advise them and call on them to retreat with dignity. I, I, can I just say I agree with I agree with our assessment. I would say that in terms of the events of the last year, twenty twenty three, the shock to the collective psyche of the West, or at least Western governments, of the defeat 
of Ukraine's summer offensive cannot be overestimated. I think there was a very, very widespread assumption that it would at least achieve some big effects. And the fact, I mean, I, I read articles about this, that, you know, the United States, Britain, Germany threw everything at Ukraine that they reasonably could or thought they could, uh, that it all failed. Ha it, 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 they're still struggling to come to terms with that. But can I suggest an alternative to the one that you've been outlining, which is what about rather than lowering thresholds, which, again, as a child of the Cold War, I am very nervous about. What about working towards strengthening the institutional and diplomatic framework outside the West? I, I agree. I think it is very going to be very, very difficult for a while to um, involve the West in direct negotiations. But Russia is being very effective, it seems to me, in building strong relationships with many countries. I mean, you mentioned Indonesia and Indonesia becoming a great power. Well, Russia actually has good relations with Indonesia. It, Indonesia has problems with other countries around it, but the Russians are always there. Mr. Lavrov is making quite an impact, even as we're speaking in New York, where he has been at the Security Council. We see BRICS coming together in interesting ways. And a topic where uh, Professor Deason is far more informed than me, we also see processes of Eurasian integration now starting to take shape. Might it not be a more effective way to sort of say to the Americans and the Europeans, well, look, you're going down this incredibly dangerous path. It's catastrophic for you if you continue. Uh, I, but in the meantime, you're becoming I isolated. Agree. I am agree with you. I'm, of course, I agree with you. It would have been better uh, to do it by uh, building a new system. The problem is that the old system is collapsing. The UN is not working. I mean, also, all, all institutions are uh, being eroded. Uh, I mean, uh, the balance are changing. And we have a gap for about 15, 20 to 20 years. Uh, first original base of the global majority plus West including West, hopefully, will be built. Yeah, this is an opening, you know, but it is also a gap. And this gap have to, ha, has to be filled. I hope that, I mean, 15, 10, 15 years from now, uh, we shall have a new institutional framework, yeah. which of the global majority, including parts of the West, Europe will be out, the uh, United States will be, still, will be still, still there, the great powers will form uh, and, and, and of our will form a new kind of a, uh, an arrangement, uh, UN plus, or even a new UN, maybe may based on the um, Shanghai Organization uh, or BRICS plus, because UN uh, uh, totally has, unfortunately, has totally degraded. There, of course, there are some institutions within the UN system which are still useful, mm. but it is, we see the total degradation of the system. Uh, so, and of course, non-proliferation treaty is not working, and uh, uh, that's why I, unfortunately, philosophically, totally agree with your premise. <laughs> I, I do not see the possibility of building something uh, viable and and uh, stable uh, unless we uh, live through this period without a new, uh, with a, without a major nuclear war. I wanted to uh, ask. Oh, hopefully, sorry. even with, without any nuclear war. So that's why I'm saying that. I mean, the, uh, if it comes uh, to use of nuclear weapons against uh, some European countries, you know, a collective Europe, which has already, uh, again, like in, in Napoleonic and Hitler times, um, uh, is attacking Russia, uh, we could punish them. But that would be terrible because I am part of a European and I do not want. Uh, uh, Europeans to die, and European Europe to collapse totally. Uh, but uh, we have, and I'm of course we are talking with the Chinese. We are talking with Indians. We will talk with, uh, I mean, on your, on the ways of uh, building up new system and uh, and on the ways of strengthening nuclear deterrence, and even on the new theory of nuclear deterrence, because it's useless at this juncture to talk. Unfortunately, to talk with our American or European partners, they, by the way, they are forbidden to talk to us. It is dangerous uh, if they come to Russia and and talk seriously uh, with Russians. They will be <laughs> called to the police. I know uh, quite a few 
or else. <laughs> a few cases like that. I mean, uh, it's not uh, things are difficult here too, but not as as bad. Russians are traveling and returning back without being asked uh, what they ha had been doing uh, before. But that is a, a side question. Uh, the question is this gap, and to fill this gap, I have I think, and also to solve uh, uh, Ukrainian problem or Russian Western problem in Europe which is, by the way, of course, now um, uh, in the center. However, it is not the center. The center mm -hmm. issue is the major and the, and the shift of power in the world, which has uh, which started, of course, before 2008. It started already in the 60s and in the 50s and the 60s, But uh, then, uh, all of a sudden, it was stopped by a collapse of the Soviet Union for its own reasons. But now it, 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 it goes on with, with, uh, with more and more speed. So this period should be uh, directed uh, by cold-blooded uh, hands. And if people do not have cold-blooded brains, uh, uh, you have to reinstall some kind of brains into their Uh, has even with the help of a stick, hopefully only showing the stick, uh, not uh, using it. Well, as deterrence uh, seems to decline very quickly, I was curious what what do you see the likely pathway to a direct war between NATO and Russia? Because I I, I remember back in December of 2021, before Russia invaded, uh, you know, the former director of Russian analysis at CIA, uh, George Beebe, he he gave this interview where he indicated that Russia could go to war because uh, the risk or the threat of doing nothing became greater than the threat of actually doing something. Uh, because, well, his uh, the summary of his argument was the United States was, you know, modernizing the ports in Ukraine to fit their warships. They were entrenching themselves in Ukraine, and uh, you know, if uh, if if Russia doesn't do anything now in a couple of uh, couple of years, it would be impossible to change this uh, projection. So, and um, yeah, it reminds me also what William Burns, the now director of CIA, argued that you know if they continue to push into Ukraine, Russia would invade, even though it wouldn't want to do so. Uh, anyways, my my point is that it seems like a similar situation appears to develop now because we see. United States and NATO uh, seemingly can attack inside Russian borders with uh, impunity. And again, if Russia responds directly to NATO, then there will be a possible NATO-Russia war. However, if Russia fails, then to respond, then it may signal that it red lines doesn't matter and it can be trampled. So I'm just, this is a problematic uh, dilemma, it would seem. Again, I'm not advocating any retaliation against NATO country. I'm just It seems like this will be a possible pathway to a war. I'm just, uh, how, how do you assess it? Uh, as, as, I, as I've said, I do not think that there is a possibility of a major Russian NATO uh, conventional war. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid that if uh, uh, NATO gets involved, or uh, Russia gets tired of defeating NATO in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Uh, nuclear weapons would be used and uh, NATO would be devastated. So several European countries will suffer. Uh, and Germany will pay uh, its debts to the humanity, first of all, but some others will also mm -hmm. uh, will also suffer. And I, uh, I'm a Russian and I, uh, I, I, I remember the words of Dostoevsky about the uh, uh, tears of uh, uh, children. Uh, so I do not want that. Uh, but in order to save the world from their insane people or insane countries, you have sometimes you have to do that. I again, uh, I am persuading my government and uh, people around the world. We are having a lot of debates on that. That uh, uh, Western partners should stop. I have been warning for 25 years, since 1996, 1997, since the founding act, that it would do, could come to war. Then I was telling everybody that there will be a war. Then I, I, I was telling my own countrymen that we should start. But we were not going to start a war. Unfortunately, we procrastinated for too long. I think it should have been started earlier. 
and the ultimatum issue. Maybe we would have avoided uh, that uh, uh, tragedy. President Putin said uh, also he admitted that we procrastinated for too long. But now the question is absolutely simple. We shall win one way or another. Uh, uh, the problem is the cost. And uh, and the cost for Ukrainians, which were, which are de- devastated, the cost for Europeans, and the political costs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I hope that it will stop before. But again, I'm returning to my basic point. It is not only a European issue. You see that, I mean, the flare-ups of conflicts are everywhere. I mean, the Gaza um, a conflict there, uh, terrible attack of... Uh, terrorists, but then uh, something close to a genocide of Israelis uh, is creating, uh, uh, is recreating an unstable war in the Middle East, because uh, Israel is losing one of the reasons, one of the, uh, of the repercussions is uh, Israel is uh, losing its legitimacy uh, in the world. But it's only one point. I mean, you, you see that everything is changing, and then uh, Pakistan starts to attack Iran and vice versa, and things will go on indefinitely. And there is already small flare-ups uh, already in the uh, Latin American. Five or six wars are, 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 go, are uh, going already on, on in Africa. Nobody pays attention uh, to that. Uh, let Africans die because the Western press is not interested. But people are dying. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we uh, and the Igorus period by reinstalling nuclear fuels. I assume that there will be more nuclear powers. I think that the uh, more stable system, uh, which uh, will, will have something like twelve to twelve fourteen nuclear powers eventually, mm. and then uh, this whatever these powers. To, uh, 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 start to build a, a new uh, balance, a new balance and more fair uh, system. But again, the question is, and I, I assume that that will happen. Our uh, well, policy towards uh, what we call world majority, um, and we have just thought of that, is aimed at that, and it has been, the support has been widely supported by our government. Uh, but uh, before that, to arrive in this world, we have to uh, first uh, to reinstall the fuse. Mm. Otherwise, we are doomed. Mm. And that is uh, my real concern. Again, mm. of course, I'm really unhappy uh, that people are dying. Uh, but as a, as, let me call myself, quote unquote, strategic thinker and a historian, mm. I know where we are going mm. for sure. Like we've been predicting uh, a war over Ukraine for 25 years. Now I'm saying that if we do not stop the slide towards a third world war, Mm -hmm. and I see only one means of that at this juncture, unfortunately, that is by reinstalling the nuclear fuels, uh, hopefully without using uh, nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, I will continue to call on my government and we Mm -hmm. are together with our colleagues on new uh, concept of uh, deterrence and new strategy of deterrence because the old deterrence uh, had several functions so as uh, uh, President Dizan has mentioned uh, most of them are not functioning anymore mm-hmm. and we have to uh, rethink even uh, that mm-hmm. but we have to eventually uh, to come to a conclusion uh, that not that deter that uh, the world to be built uh, uh, will be the world Without be without war, mm. Mm. because uh, the uh, big wars, especially in the world of multiple powers, uh, uh, is forbiddingly, uh, forbiddingly desperate. But we have to live for this 10, 20 years. Mm. Well. Can I just say, uh, just, just just a few points uh, to follow up. I, I, I mean, you may be interested to know, I don't know whether this has reached Moscow yet, but I think the plan in the West about Ukraine is that when the Russians win, which I think most people now understand that they will, you're going to try to ferment an insurgency there. This is the new 
apparently plan that people are talking about. I think it's a disastrous plan, by the way. Uh, it's a terrible plan for Ukraine. And I think uh, it's also a terrible plan for Europe. But I'm not going to spend time discussing it. There, as I said, I think it is a terrible plan at multiple levels. But again, I wonder whether diplomatic approaches don't sometimes achieve the very kind of outcomes that you're talking about. I mean, we've seen this big rapprochement between Russia and North Korea. Now, North Korea acquired nuclear weapons because it felt threatened by the United States. Uh, I mean, that was the only reason we now know that North Korea decided to acquire nuclear weapons. It had no other reason for doing so. In the 1990s, it didn't have nuclear weapons and it didn't have a nuclear weapons program. Um, there's worries about Iran. If Iran ever does go down the route of acquiring nuclear weapons, it will be because, again, they are worried about the United States, which is now talking openly, by the way, of missile strikes on Iran. And they see nuclear weapons as providing them with some degree of protection. But what we are seeing is that countries that are vulnerable, like North Korea, like Iran, are able now to move forward. And they're able to go again to the other side, to Russia, to the BRIC states. They're able to re uh, reopen trading systems. They're able to establish alternative security arrangements, which does provide a degree of deterrence which hadn't existed before and does perhaps construct to some extent or accelerate the construction of this security architecture, bringing in other powers, other rising powers that you've been saying. So isn't that perhaps, again, the more effective way of going about this thing, you know, restraining the West by building relations with countries like Iran, building relations with countries like North Korea, <laughs> closing off options for the Americans or people in the West to attack these countries in a cost, uh, in a way that they think will not be effect, will not be damaging to themselves. Uh, the, the turn of history uh, is, um, or the title of history, uh, is going in the direction which, like, uh, which Russia likes. But the problem is, of course, losing people. And uh, we think that eventually we will write the which you are talking about. Uh, and uh, where we will have, of course, uh, multiple great powers, uh, a much more fair system, and a much more fair political system. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll have uh, multiple currency systems, we'll have new arrangements, everything will be uh, excellent. I, actually, uh, I'm really, I really regret that I'm so old uh, because uh, uh, the world which I envision uh, uh, the third new uh, world war uh, looks very promising for me. Multicultured, multicultured I mean, um, much freer. Uh, but uh, we have to uh, uh, to come to this world, uh, and uh, and also understanding that this uh, much more uh, uh, much free world will also have uh, a lot of problems, uh, which also should be uh, taken care of. Now uh, we have several revolutions in the military sphere, uh, which already are uh, visible. Uh, so we have to uh, stop the new arm, uh, several new arms races. I mean, uh, now we have uh, the new uh, the multiplicity of uh, very cheap missiles. I mean, uh, these all kind of flying object, uh, objects could uh, uh, make our life hell. And uh, they are uh, they are God sent weapon. Forbid me for being so nasty to the terrorists. We have to. Um, prevent uh, the use of biological weapons, which are very obvious already. And uh, uh, people are uh, uh, talking about uh, X uh, factor, etc. But uh, we all know that, I mean, biological weapons are being prepared. And in order to deter biological, we also have to uh, reinstall deterrence. Uh, and uh, that is, but that would need a new culture. 
Um, and it, it would need a, a change of a mentality of uh, the peoples in the new world. Mm. Um, people in the in Indonesia or in, uh, in Pakistan or in the, the Arab world do not yet understand, for example, the threat of biological weapons, mm. which is almost as bad uh, as nuclear ones, if we permit them to develop. Mm. But these are many, many factors which I described in my uh, article on the age of wars. Uh, so we have to reinstall fuses and for that, it is obligation, I think it's obligation of my country. Nobody else could do that at this juncture. Uh, but to, uh, and I, uh, to uh, lower the threshold, to go up the ladder of escalation, hopefully, of course, stopping short of use of nuclear weapons. But uh, if people uh, do not... Um, uh, uh, do not uh, uh, come to senses. Mm -hmm. We are in, inevitably will have uh, wars all over, and nuclear weapons will be used mm -hmm. uh, here or there. So, uh, and, and 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 biological weapons could be used. By the by the way, biological weapons, which are not very much debated, mm -hmm. are uh, uh, weapons of the poor. They are cheap, and their dissemination is cheap with all kind of these drones. Mm. So there are many, many other problems which are, we are uh, facing, with, which we do not want uh, uh, to talk about and to think about. Mm. And uh, at this juncture, unfortunately, I do not see any other reliable instrument but reinstalling with your nuclear war. And I'm sorry to say that, and I had uh, all kind of moral uh, problems of thinking about that for several years before I started restarted the debate on nuclear weapons and on nuclear deterrence because I knew that the reaction would be harsh and I invited fire on myself which I'm happy uh, to do because I think I have helped not only on my country but I am hope to help the humanity to get over this period relatively peacefully. Well, we appear to be running out of time, which is a great shame because uh, your article also encompasses a lot of other interesting points. You address the uh, perhaps need of reforming capitalism, you know, as uh, due to the continuous growth being measured in ever more consumption. You discuss the digital technologies of dumbing down rather than inform uh, the traditional habitats. Uh, uh, people being divorced from it, which reminded me a bit about Durkheim's studies of the you know Industrial Revolution in France. So it was a lot of interesting topics. Uh, perhaps we get to cover this on some other point in time. Uh, well, we we have to have a conference, a big conference on all these issues. And actually, uh, these um, whatever thirteen or fourteen topics which I put down on the table uh, on the table, uh, which I put down on the table were uh, were only invitation uh, to a larger discussion. Uh, but I hope that. Uh, I will, I will, will come down to a thorough and uh, thoughtful uh, discussion on that. I think, I think we would welcome that. Thank you very much. I think that would be very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.